what made mm-hmm. you choose wine and say, okay, this is the one? Like, were you drinking wine on the train? Like, you know what? I could do this. <laughs> or was it? <laughs> right. Oh, that's what happened. All right. You, you, cool. You're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to The Nugget, the show where we talk to talented and accomplished guests and learn about the nuggets to their success in order to inspire us to pursue our goals and dreams. And in today's episode, we are so excited to welcome Amira Garba. But first, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Kara. I'm Juan S. And I'm JP. Miss Amira Garba is an award-winning winemaker, careerpreneur, mother of two, and marketing executive in the tech industry. Amira found and followed her love for wine into the creation of the life of her dream. Her lovely wine was named Wine Brand of the Year, and Amira herself was named Innovator of the Year slash Who's Next at the 2021 Wine and Culture Fest. Her brand allows her to make space for more Black women to enter the wine and spirits industry. Amira is also a devoted and proud helicopter mom to two beautiful girls, and her journey is dedicated to them. Let's welcome Miss Amira. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. You are welcome, and we are so excited to have you on the show today and get to know you better. First up, can you share a little bit about your background and your interests, like when you were younger? We're curious to know how, what you might have been involved in and might align with your career path. Oh, I don't think any of it aligned. <laughs> Which is cool, I am too. a regular, regular girl. Yeah, from Orange, New Jersey. Small town, born and raised. I'm actually back home in Orange now. Very, very proud to be from this town. I went to public school up through middle school, and then I got a chance to go to a very prestigious high school on scholarship through a program called New Jersey Seed. So, Kara, I know you're an educator. Uh, we can talk all day about my perspective and point of view on education in this country. Mm-hmm. But I am a proud Seed alum, and it's a program that pretty much takes um, lower economic youth in inner cities, prepares them to go to uh, private day schools. And so I had the opportunity to go to a really good high school that was predominantly white. So I did have a bit of a struggle that I'm learning uh, impacted me a lot through therapy these days. I didn't know it did, but Mm -hmm. going, living in my hometown, taking a train every day to a predominantly white, all the prestigious high school was a, I pretty much lived a dual life at the age of like from 12 to 17. Like it was crazy. Mm. So I'm pretty sure that helped shape me as well. Then I went on to Temple University where I'm a, I'm a proud owl. I studied marketing. So I have oh. always had an interest in business and marketing when it comes to my education at first college. So I studied um, at Fox School of Business there and graduated from Laude. Back, back, long, 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 long time ago. Ooh, I mean, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to Philly too. Love that city. And then from there, I went straight to work. And I'm sure we'll talk about this, but my path, my journey was always about me checking boxes because I thought I had to escape my life, per se, and where I came from. And now I scream it from the mountaintop where I come from, so it's kind of a full circle for me. Mm. But it was all about got to go to the best schools, got to graduate on time, got to start working right away. There was no gap year. There was no take time off. I literally graduated and had a job waiting for me in retail. So I worked for Macy's for 14, 13 years in corporate doing marketing. From there now, I work for Audible as a marketing executive. I've been here two years. But in the midst of all that, I launched Lovely Wine. And that was the response to me saying, no longer am I going to check boxes. No longer am I going to be afraid of making a mistake. No longer do I care about being the token or doing what everyone is expecting of me. I needed to live for me because in that too, the box, I got married, bought a house, had kids. Like by 24, I was a whole adult. And I don't know who told me I had to be, but for some reason I chose to be. And it just, I was burned out. 
already, I was too young to feel like that. So I needed to take a chance on me and I needed to find something that I love. You know, I didn't care what anyone else loved, but something that I love. And that's why I love me so much. <laughs> like a lot of wine. Are you enjoying the conversation? Please like and subscribe to our channel. Be sure to hit the bell for notifications and be the first to know when new episodes drop. Do you have any nuggets of wisdom to share? We'd love to hear from you on the nuggets you've learned. Please comment below. What you said about checking boxes, where did that come from, this idea of checking boxes? I'm still working through that in therapy. <laughs> Me and my therapist are still trying to figure that out. But I will say what I think, and we talked about, where I think it comes from is the pressure that I had being the first to do a lot of things in my family. Mm -hmm. First to go to college, right? First to kind of be on track to do great things. Like I don't come from a well-to-do family. I come from a loving family though, but I don't come from a well-to-do um, family. And I'm the first to, to leave the country and study abroad and go to college and work. Like, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. when you start to get accustomed to that, you feel me, I see for me, I felt this pressure all my life to continue to make people proud. And I forgot about making my own self proud in that in those moments. Mm. So I think that's where it comes from. It's like, well, everyone wants to be proud of me. And I like the feeling of people being proud of me. So let me keep doing what I think will make people proud. And that's what society says you should be doing. You know, work, get married, buy a house, have kids. Do live the dream, the mm -hmm. American dream. Mm -hmm. But they don't talk about how the American dream could be boring as hell. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. You because say what you're saying is super relatable. I mean, you see all of us <laughs> nodding, and I'm sure yeah. our listeners will be able to feel that in common with you. So thank you for sharing that. Unpopular opinion, but I got bored. And um, now I feel like I'm living, and I'm so grateful that I'm doing that in front of my kids at the ages that they are. They're 10, and one will be almost 13. I cannot believe it because... They are my, like, inspiration, my drive. Like, I was meant to be their mom. But I had them young, right? Early, early 20s. And, you know, people always say, well, would you do it again? Probably still, because I still want to be able to provide them a life that I want them to be accustomed to. But I also know I was meant to be their mom at this time because now they get to see me, like, really going after it. And I see where they pick those tricks up, too, and I love it. Awesome. So with that said... Who would you say is a part of your support circle? Ooh. Most likely you didn't do it alone, not just your own grit, but with support. What does support look like for you and who is in that circle? I have not done, do not do, will never do anything on my own. God has placed some amazing people in my life. So first and foremost, my parents, my mom and stepdad allow me to build lovely because they help me with my kids. They are the best grandparents anyone could ever ask for. I could not do and have the freedom I have to grow this business and still work and be a super mom if my parents wasn't there. And my mom, I give it to her, like she didn't have the best life. She didn't always have the answers, but she worked hard to figure it out. We kind of worked hard together. We kind of grew mm -hmm. up together, me and my mom. And I'm really proud of her and I love making her proud. And I'm gonna say throughout my journey, God has always placed people, guidance counselors, teachers, people who always saw more in me than I saw myself. Sometimes people don't have that blessing. So I never take that for granted because I probably would have quit a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna say I'm always the girl who knows how to push herself and, and pump myself up. I've had people who, uh, who refuse to let me quit on myself. Mm -hmm. Every counselor, my family, my parents, my cousins, my aunts, and then my girl circle. Like, seriously, I don't trust any woman who don't got girlfriends. Like, it's you, mom. <laughs> because it's not, you have to be able to have a strong group of girlfriends who know you, who encourage you, who support you, who get it. My girl group is strong. So you are absolutely correct. Now, what I've had to learn and work on is asking for help, you know, mm -hmm. because sometimes I do like to do it on my own. And that's where those people who are like, no, we see you. We're going to insert ourselves and encourage you. We're not letting you quit. Because when I'm in my bag, I know how to get it done. But when I'm not, I tend to fall back a bit and like try to fly under the radar. And that's where my circle comes in. They never let me. So it's a lot of people rooting for me. And I'm just super, super grateful. I'm like, mm. super grateful. That inspires a question I have for you. Um, I appreciate that you mentioned that it was challenging for you to ask for help. Um, that's something that's hard mm -hmm. for me too, because I 
for some reason feel like hyper independent, like I have to do things by myself. And I don't know where I got this idea. If you ask for help, it's a sign of weakness, but I think it's actually a sign of mm -hmm. strength to be so aware that mm -hmm. there's something that you maybe aren't as proficient at, but asking for help can get you there mm -hmm. or still get the job done, what have you. So I'm just curious to know about when you decided to stop like checking the boxes and like take your life mm -hmm. kind of more into your own hands. Were there any people who challenged that and they were like, no, like keep checking the boxes. You're answering kind of other people's expectations. Like keep doing that. I mean, in other words, right? Mm -hmm. Stay on this path that mm -hmm. you've been on versus taking that sharp detour and doing things for yourself. Like were there, were there people who were like naysayers or who challenged that? I will have to confidently say absolutely not. Absolutely not. Wow. And this is such an interesting question because this makes me think about a little bit off topic. We you know people are always like on social media and subbing people and acting like they got it out the mud and <laughs> I do this on my own. I'm like, Flexing I really on the gram. Like, I don't, or that haters are this, haters are that. I don't think I have haters. If I do, I am so diligent about who I keep in my circle mm, that mm -hmm. that stuff doesn't phase me. I have never had anyone in my circle not believe in me. I think that's a testament to who I am. Again, if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Got I've it. never given anyone a reason to believe that I'm not going to do what I say I'm going to accomplish. So I feel like there's never been a ro any room in my life for anyone to be like, well, I don't think you can do that. Because Amira, not to speak in third person, but <laughs> so Amira has always been an overachiever, a go-getter, sometimes hyper-independent. And so learning to ask for help has been humbling, but it's also, again, had to also realize back to you guys' original question, there were always people in my corner. Mm -hmm, I just mm -hmm. didn't recognize them at one point. I really thought I was doing everything on my own. You could not tell me because I know where it came from. My grandparents were my prime caretakers the first half of my life, and my grandfather's favorite thing was, God bless the child that has his own. Mm. I was never allowed to ask for people, never allowed to ask my friends for anything like it. I could give you, I used to give kids clothes off my back, but I would never ask anyone for anything. And now, the minute I decided to make the journey, right, and to love me, I had to humble myself quick because I was a know-it-all before. Again, I know mm. it. If I don't know it, I don't need to be doing it because the boxes are safe, right? The boxes are safe. That's my safe space. I know how to control what I need to control. And I can achieve this because I know it's within my box. Now I'm talking about achieving something that I have no experience in, right? And I had to, like, get mentors. And I had to ask for help. And that was the best experience of my life. I have learned so much, have gained so much just by humbling myself and saying, I don't have the answer. Someone help me. Mm -hmm. Will you mentor me? Can I, what can I bring to your table? Like always making sure it's reciprocity is like my favorite word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so no, to answer your original question, I, if there were, I don't know those people who told me I couldn't do it because I tend to block stuff like that out. But also in that I did have to get humble and say, but um, I don't know everything I'm doing. So can someone help me put me in the right direction? And then I'll mm -hmm. take it from there. So mm -hmm. hopefully I answered your question. But. That's powerful. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Tell us about that journey of, you know, launching Lovely Wines. I drink wine, but I'm like, starting a wine business is not something that comes to mind. <laughs> And it, it reflects your grit, your tenacity. Right. You know how sometimes you start small, like, okay, maybe I'm going to do something. But you just went for, like, to break barriers. Because right? I'm crazy like that. Again, <laughs> if I say I'm going to do it, I got to go hard and go Because <laughs> remember, I'm trying to do the opposite of what I was doing before. I'm trying to, like, I don't want to be safe. I don't want to check boxes. This is the time to go. And I literally jumped out the window and started a whole wine brand. Some days, I don't understand what I was thinking. <laughs> But other days, I'm super proud. So that transition was kind of an easy one in a sense of making the decision to do it. Because again, I was mm -hmm. fed up. I knew I was too young to be living the life that I was living. Like four hours of my day commuting to work in New York. Like Ooh. just going home to cook. And cook. First of all, I'm a great mom, but I'm too young for that. Like I'm high energy. Mm -hmm. I'm a mom, mm -hmm. okay? Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. <laughs> like, I'm meant to live. I, it's hard for me to sit still, but I have become someone I didn't recognize. Mm -hmm. I was playing a role that I knew 
wasn't me at my core. I just didn't know how I got there because I was there for so long, right? Like this robotic life. In my core, I was like, that's not me. So when I turned 30, that's when I was, I don't know, maybe it was the number that scared me. And I was like, absolutely not. I got to do something for me. So I read the book, finally read the book, The Alchemist, favorite book, recommend it. I've read it twice now because I was on like, finally, like, again, humbling myself. I don't have the answers, but people are talking about that book. So let me try it. Alchemist changed my life because it, it, it held up a mirror to what I was doing. And that was overthinking, which I am. And my core, I'm an overthinker and I'll, I'll overthink Relatable. and I'm risk averse. And so I won't take a risk because I'm like, if I can't figure out it. If I can't figure out A to Z and make it perfect, I'm a perfectionist. I'm not going to even risk it. And that book was like, to me, what I took from it was don't overthink it. What do you like to do? Follow the signs, follow what God is pointing you to. And I like to drink wine <laughs> a lot. And I was oh, like, no. well, let's follow this purpose. Are you okay? <laughs> let's see what I can that. do here. No, I was going to. <laughs> that's going that's to the most like, crazy, like, crazy application I've heard of it, too. It's just like, follow your Listen, dreams. You like to drink wine. Start a wine. That's start a so... wine. It's, it's, but it's, it's really that simple. It seems like wow. it was that simple, yeah. That is how I interpreted the book. <laughs> it was like, if you want to do this, and this, is, and this is where you are finding your happiness. I was going to wine tastings for no reason. When I had like two small kids at home, I was finding time to read about wine. I was like, mm-hmm. well, is this my purpose and passion? I was lighting up in this world that I found to be so intriguing and so new and so untapped. And I was like, hmm, at this point too, I was buying wine, tasting wine. And I was like, I don't know a black winemaker. I don't know a woman winemaker. And this is what happens when you have a long train commute, two <laughs> hours each way. From a lot of to time live. to think. <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, but who's going to stop me? Like, who's going to tell me I can't, right? And I was like, how cool would that be to be a black woman making wine? Now, fast forward, there are a ton of black women. Not a lot. When I say a ton, I mean, I know them now. Mm-hmm. You know, we, mm-hmm. they, they exist. We exist. But we're still only like 1% of the population. But you couldn't tell me on my train that I was going to be the first <laughs> and the baddest, right? Yep. And so I was just like, and I love a challenge. So I said, why not? And the stars kind of aligned. I found great partners. It was, that's the part of the book, too, that I was like, well, if everything is lining up, like, how did I find partners to work with so fast? And I just had to follow it. And I told myself I would follow it until I was no longer having fun. And I'm still here six years later. Wow. <laughs> that smile on your face says every step was worth it because you just <laughs> glow. At, you absolutely glow. Thank you. Just as a note to you, when you were talking about overthinking, both of these guys just nudged me because we just <laughs> had this conversation about how my brain is like on time. overload over time. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, like- okay. Amir's talking to me too. So your, Listen. your process is Listen. super relatable. Thank you for being so candid with us. Do you have an audio podcast? Are you looking to grow your audience by expanding into video? Partner with Prosper Digital TV, a virtual and full service video production company with a dedicated team ready to expand your podcast into video. Visit www.prosperdigital.tv or call 718-622-0062 to get started today. No problem. And a lot of us, even when you were talking about earlier how, you know, feeling like we can't be strong, like, that's a black woman thing. We've heard that. That's where this soft life movement is coming out of. We're tired of feeling like we have to think for everyone and take on everything. We want to be soft. We want to sit back. We want to let someone else think for a change, you know? But, girl, we're going to be soft and we're going to stop overthinking, okay? Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. And Jason and Juanes, thank you for reminding me of my journey out of over. Try to be all silent about it, like <laughs> no, talking I, to you. I appreciate that. Can I ask you a little bit about, I don't know if this is too soon in the conversation, but well, what was the difference you felt when you were feeling like maybe you're doing the wrong work or kind of going in the wrong direction to now being like, yes, this is right. This reminds me of when people are talking about the great resignation that's trending, right? And folks had a chance in the pandemic to like really sit with themselves, really sit at home and experience maybe their work in a different way and go, you know what? Nah, Mm -hmm. right? So can you talk about that transition? 
the funny thing is, I'm a careerpreneur, right? So mm-hmm. sometimes I wonder if I have transitioned. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I wonder, I go back and forth, so you guys are in my process with me. Now this whole, you got to be an entrepreneur. I got kids. I like my benefits. I like stability. <laughs> but I also love having a wine. Why can't I do it all, right? And maybe one day I won't be able to, and I'll have to pick. But I am trying, or I'm working towards not feeling the pressure mm. to have to choose a life that may not work for me versus choosing one that's absolutely working for me right now. I don't know that I have transitioned, but I will say the choice to continue to work while building my dream was because I have children. And I vow that I will always provide them a life better than what I had. And I do not subscribe to the notion that people must live in struggle, especially black people. We don't have to struggle. We get to live a life of comfort and ease and Marketing, my marketing job provides that. I actually like marketing. I'm pretty good at it. I like the people I work with. I like what I'm learning. Success to me is balance. Balance is another one of my favorite words. I have to still feel joy. I'm following what brings me more joy. It would bring me peace. Earlier, you said you were just some regular degular girl, but none of this sounds regular I mean, degular. I mean, I ain't never really been regular degular. <laughs> there we I go. Mean, That's what I wanted to hear, okay. you know? Cause you, you're, you're definitely, no. <laughs> you're definitely a rooftop brunch vibe, you know. Yes. And so I'm like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, come on, it's the summer. What are we talking about right now? What are we talking about? Me and my right. got a running list right now in the group chat. Where we going next? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. When, when when everything clears up, you know, I'll see you next weekend. You know, let's 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 let's, let's link let's, up and talk about after the PCR. Test test. After the PCR. Tell me where up. Listen. Yes. <laughs> you were working you were working in retail. I see something that's a little ironic. You were working in retail for a long time, mm-hmm. stressing you out. Mm-hmm. You find a new job in uh, mm-hmm. tech. You love it. And now you're finding yourself with your passion essentially in retail again. Would you classify your business as retail? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I guess. So, 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 so now you can talk about the difference. Retail the industry, yes, but I was marketing at Macy's. So, and I was actually, I started as a buyer, an assistant buyer. Okay. So I bought lingerie for um, the East Coast stores. And then we became one. Then I moved into marketing analytics and I ended, when I left, I was working the app. I was doing pretty much product marketing mm. for the Macy's app. So I kind of ended in tech. And so my next job was perfect because I wanted to move into a company that was a little bit more tech focused. And now it's funny because, yes, I technically sell a product, but to know me is to know if I could give wine away, I would. That's not the fun part. The fun Mm -hmm. part are the events, the wine tastings, the teaching, converting people to be wine lovers who think they would never like wine, converting my Moscato drinkers to red wine lovers, like all of that. (laughs) I I figure it's it's a nice full circle moment because, you know, you have one way to look at retail and then another way to look at it where you get to... Yeah, but Market, I hate you, the sales part of it. <laughs> I get it, but, but but it's natural to you. It's a part of you. You're, you're, mm-hmm. You are your customer, essentially. It's like, I love wine, I drink wine, and I sell wine. It constantly feeds mm-hmm. you, which is great. I like that. Along yeah. those lines, what has been some of the hurdles that you've had to overcome in building and um, some of the things that you can teach someone else? The first thing I always tell people, especially those who reach out and want to start wine brands, is you have to have a passion for it. This is not a money-making industry for people who look like us. Not yet. They say the joke is to make a million, you got to spend. The wine and spirits industry is heavily regulated. It's owned by mostly white men. And a lot of us are coming in and breaking down those walls, but we're doing it over time. And so if you're trying to come in this industry and make money quick, get risky, it's not the industry for you. Most people in this industry, especially the ones that I have met, there is a passion for wine. Whatever your passion part of the business is, wine writing, blogging, wine making, you have to love it to keep going because there's so many rules and they change every day, I swear. And there's always something new to learn. And you're not going to always see people who look like you or maybe take you seriously. Like, I have not experienced blatant racism. I will never say that I have. But I have had microaggressions where it's like people assume I don't make really great wine or I don't know what I'm talking about. And I've had that from people who look like me. And it's like, wait, oh, you really do this? Yes, I've, I've dedicated time, time away from my baby to, like, study this and work on this and learn my craft. So... The challenge is being passionate about it so that you continue through 
any type of negativity um, and then red tape and regulations and all of that stuff. So you have to be passionate and then find your tribe. Some of the people I've met in this industry now are some of my best friends and they are my mentor. I bounce ideas off. They're people who encourage me when I get I'm like, I don't know if I can do this, y'all. No, yes, you can. So find your tribe. If that works for anything you're doing, especially if it's an ex- tap industry maybe where the barriers of entry may not be you know as friendly and then in this specific industry which I wish I would have told my younger self is learn the laws the regulations Mm -hmm. every state is different when it comes to wine and spirits right now I'm trying to transition from being a direct to consumer online wine brand to having distribution and being in stores local stores wine shops restaurants but it's scary because I actually like pay a premium now for someone else to handle all of those that legalese for me. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. going into distribution, a lot of that will now fall on me and making, you know, um, understanding the laws from Cali to Texas to Florida to Georgia to Alabama. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> it was annoying. They don't even allow you to shit there. It's a mess. I wish I would have like did a little more research, but I also know me. I told y'all, if I didn't jump out the window, I was going to find a way to talk myself <laughs> out of it. Even if I never make another bottle of wine, if tomorrow I decide it's not joy- joyous anymore, I want to do it. Like, I'm so proud of what I've done. I think it's okay to jump out the window sometimes and not be perfect. I, a mentor of mine once said, perfect is done. Are you enjoying the conversation? Please like and subscribe to our channel. Be sure to hit the bell for notifications and be the first to know when new episodes drop. Do you have any nuggets of wisdom to share? We'd love to hear from you on the nuggets you've learned. Please comment below. Sometimes just get it done. Things will fall into place. How many people we know made mistakes and figured it out, right? Right. But if you keep trying to get it perfect and perfect and nitpick, you may miss your opportunity. I'm glad I did it the way I did it. So what would you say was the the specific catalyst that allowed you to choose from, you know, let's say you have multiple passions, right? What made Mm -hmm. you choose wine and say, okay, this is the one. Like, were you drinking wine on the train? Like, you know what? I could do this. (laughs) Or was it? Right. (laughs) Oh, that's what happened. All right. You're not listening. (laughs) I was drinking everybody else wine. (laughs) Babies are stressing me out. Married life was stressing me out. Got no longer married. (laughs) And I was just like, what do I like? And I was like, So you went well, down the list. Just, I mean, okay. that, this part. I have always, when I tried to tap into the little girl and tried to get back to, well, if you're checking all these boxes, there had to be something you dreamed about when you were younger. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like I blocked that little girl out because I had gotten accustomed to the way of life that I was living. So I tried really hard. I was like, what did I want to be when I grew up? And finally I was like, oh, I always wanted to be a boss. I always wanted to have my own business. I remember, I did not remember my major at Temple the first week of school was entrepreneurship. There was an entrepreneurship track. But I got in my head and said, nope, I should do something more secure. I'm mm. going to do marketing because at least I get to be creative but safe, right? But at my core, I've always wanted to do my own thing. So if I said, if the book is inspiring me to not overthink and just my purpose and passion must be something I love, it just clicked on the train. I'm not in I was like, I want a wine business, <laughs> And then I was like, I saw it in my vision. I was like, my girl selling wine who looks like me. Like, that's so dope. I said, I never bought wine from a black person before. Like, all of it just made sense. And it seemed like a challenge. And it was all up a mirror's alley. Like, that's mm. my thing. So, well, no, look that's at real. that. Let's, let's go back to that. Because when we first started the conversation, I was asking you about how your interest as a child might connect to where you are now. And initially you were like, well, not really, mm-hmm. but now look at that, right? Your little girl always wanted to be a boss. I so, mm-hmm. right. So really in a Can way, once you dig a little I deeper. I have to remind my fast story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is mm-hmm. so, so dope. And I'm so happy that you arrived at that place where you feel the way you feel mm-hmm. now. Can I ask you if you mm-hmm. don't yeah. mind, is there a section of The Alchemist that really mm-hmm. stood out to you? Because I know that's a really popular book. I know tons of people have it on their reading list. I don't remember because the last, I read it twice. And I think the last time I read it was three years ago. So now I'm seeing bits and pieces of it. Like I'm seeing desert. <laughs> Can I remember the one part? I cannot. I wish I could. Okay. Could but it's on later. my list to reread again. Because um, every time I read it, I remember the second time I read it, it wasn't about following signs it was more about being present 
like, so I said, I, I remember getting two different things from the book because I, I tend to not be in the present. Mm. But I wish I could tell you which part because I feel like I'm going to get all the parts mixed up. But I do know that this boy started in one place, had a whole life, kind of ended up back there, but had this whole journey in between that he didn't have mapped out. He didn't always have the answers. And it was just so opposite of who I was. And I found it so intriguing. And I said, I want to try to live like this. And I've had the most fun doing that. That is dope. I'm excited for you. (laughs) As crazy as it sounds. You still have, like, (laughs) energy you're using and building up. and and Most days I'm shaking in my boots, but it's okay. (laughs) I I I I love the the fact that you're afraid, but you're still pushing through. Mm -hmm. And The Alchemist happens to be one of my favorite books as well. And one that I come to quite often to read. What strikes me about it is that his journey of of searching... Only, like you said, to come back. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, to me, it's almost like the Wizard of Oz. It was in you all along, mm-hmm. right? When they come back to that line to realize that everything he wanted to do. So when Kara connected to you, you going back to a ch- to your childhood to say, what did I want to do? I always wanted to be a boss. And hence, there you are, you're a boss. You're going back to that self, right? Connecting to it. So I think there's all coming full circle that's just like mm-hmm. really inspiring because it could be foolish i would imagine I, what are your struggles that you talk about right like sometimes you're afraid what are those fears what are the strategies that you can share with us that you put in place to confront mm-hmm. some of those um, obstacles that come in your way so i can be transparent about a fear i'm experiencing right now and that's growth that's scaling this business that's like it's no longer a passion for jay Panera. like you created demand you're getting interviewed. You've won a couple of awards. Like, some people know who you are. Oh, you got to, like, go, like, really make more wine and, like, really dedicate more time and maybe get investments. I can't keep spending my own money. I'm working on figuring this part out, this financial part. <laughs> but it's, like, that part is scary. Like, really going to the next level. And then what if it works? What does that mean? Like, of course, I want it to work. But what does that really mean? Am I about to sacrifice anything? Will I be able to live the, the balanced life that I live right now? Like, the no and I'm always traveling. Like, I travel all the time. I'm always somewhere different. And sometimes I'm like this, sometimes not. Like, I have, I love it. And I'm, a lot of that I've been able to do just within the past year and shedding this relationship that I was in and creating the life of freedom that I knew I deserved. I don't know. I feel like everything I've wanted is, like, right there. And I've been achieving everything I wanted. And now the next thing I want... I probably can achieve. I don't know why this moment just seems a lot scarier because it's even greater. And it's like the culmination of what I want, which is a national brand that people can walk into the store and just buy off the shelf. And they don't have to order it online. They have to pay for shipping. And I see it and I feel it. But sometimes I'm like, I don't know how to get there yet. And I'm trying to figure it out, which is not the journey I've been on, right? I'm supposed to just trust that it's going to work out because everything has been working out thus far. I don't know. I'm nervous and scared. I will be honest with y'all right now. I am nervous and afraid. It's going to get done. Question about my process. Mm. So writing it down for one, I just did another vision board where I put it on the vision board too. So that means it has to get done and constantly talking about it to my circle. So the people, again, because I don't have people who don't encourage me. Mm -hmm. I have people around me who believe in me. And so talking about my dreams, I've said it in every interview, like I'm going to have a line that people can buy in stores. That's probably like my top three, like make sure I keep going and get out of my head about it. I think that is so awesome that you are feeling nervous because that means I think, I don't want to assume, I think that means it's important to you. And I think that means it's exciting. So I'll be excited to check back with you after some time where you can tell us, I did it. I did it scared and it's dope. Yes, yes. I wanted to um, ask you a bit about balance and like what that means for you and like where that fits Mm -hmm. into your picture. Because you mentioned earlier that success is balance for you. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah. So balance meaning my life, I don't feel like anything is falling off, but everything is where it needs to be. So with my kids, 
they, they have full lives. Their activities are getting done. They feel like they have enough time with mommy. They feel like they're at school. I love to travel with my kids too. Like making sure they have a full, well-rounded life while then also making sure mommy has a full, well-rounded life. So that means, yes, I work and I have a business, but do I take time to relax? Self-care is definitely a priority for me. And my, my, one of my passions is truly traveling. Am I doing that? Am I making time to see the world or a new city or a new place, even if it's just for the weekend? So when all of my passion and things that are important to me are aligned, that's balance. And that's always going to be the Garba Girls, my business, mm -hmm. my peace, <laughs> with some travel mixed in there. Those things make me happy and, and good. I think Michelle, yes, Michelle Obama did say it's one of my favorite quotes when I went to see her on her becoming tour. She said, something will always last, right? You, you can't always be doing everything at 100%. That's mm -hmm. just unrealistic. If this week I'm focused on our work, maybe I can't hang out with the girls as much. But then you best believe I'm making up for it next week and we're going to do some really fun adventure. Or this week I'm going to have to focus on the tech job because I have a project to dish out. But that means next week, lovely, the list is getting done. And that's okay. It's being kind to yourself and having grace in those moments that everything won't get done at the same time. But am I sticking to my goals? Everyone happy. And if my kids are happy and I'm at peace, then everything's good. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Yeah, we love balance. Mm -hmm. I love balance. If I'm out of balance, I'm not. Nobody's happy. That's one of the words I circle that yeah. you share that I'm like, oh my God, that's me too. That's me too. That's me too. So I'll wrap up with that at the oh, end. But yes, I'm, I'm really... Like what you're saying really resonates with me. So I'm glad that you're sharing. Thank you. Yeah, I took a, a ton no of I took a ton yeah. of chicken scratch notes for myself because this is good. <laughs> good. I and I'm always this is may seem super weird, but I'm always wondering if like because I'm a girly girl. I'm always a girl's girl. But I'm like, do men relate? Because I can get real in my pro black woman bag. <laughs> right. So I'm glad that you guys are also circling things because I want to make sure I'm relatable in that sense because as black people too, we, we all experience a lot of the same thing. So I'm glad that you all are finding joy in this discussion with me. That's what I mean. <laughs> I mean, there's always joy in some wine and then there's also Listen. yourself. So yeah. come on. You get, I'm going to yeah. get you some wine. All right. You keep talking about the wine. I'm going to get you some wine. <laughs> but joy it's in the summertime, bottle. baby. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a quick question and then i know i'm like hijack your interview your favorite <laughs> wines go Ooh, and it doesn't have to be a brand first. it could be like it's the type what do you you keep talking about summertime what are you drinking in the summertime i'm not about the judge i feel like being judgy you, okay. a moscato is easy <laughs> for me i can't go wrong with a moscato <laughs> She's sick oh, I had a feeling you were going to react to that, but we'll come back. We'll okay, come my back. second favorite uh, yeah, is second. probably a uh Pinot Grigio. Okay. Second very favorite. those two are very easy drinking wine, so that leads me to think you're not a big drinker. I'm newish to wine. Wine. Okay, more New, of a spirit. I'm newish to wine. Then that makes total that makes total sense. Okay. No, no, no. I'm not judgy. I joke. But part of my brand, too, is making people feel confident in the wine they love. Do you have an audio podcast? Are you looking to grow your audience by expanding into video? Partner with Prosper Digital TV, a virtual and full-service video production company with a dedicated team ready to expand your podcast into video. Visit www.prosperdigital.tv or call 718 622-0062 to get started today. Let's say you only love Moscato. Mm -hmm. That's fine for a part of the thing. And if you come back to Moscato, then now I want you to know why. You don't like tannins. You really don't like high acid wines, maybe. You just really like your stuff sweet. Like, I just want people to be able to communicate or well, not even explain. You don't have to explain yourself, but Really be confident in why they like what they like because you don't have to like what everyone else likes. Wine is should be enjoyed however you like it. I just like when people, my job is to make you open-minded and then confident in life. Well, no, this is why I like Moscato and no one's going to tell me otherwise. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to think about that. Yeah, think about that. I'm glad you asked, though. What would you say, Jason? Uh, I, I, yeah, say what, about, what else? For, for, before I say it, I would love to go to some sort of uh, event and uh, interactive experience because it sounds like you know how to create mm -hmm. an experience around wine. Mm -hmm. It's not just the I wine. Do. I do. You know, my experience so with is activations and all of that. <laughs> yes. I don't have a favorite summer wine. I mean, I guess what I've what I've liked this summer mm -hmm. is just some Prosecco, you know, because it's there. But 
as far as okay. my favorite, okay. you know, Casiero del Diablo. It's a Chilean. It's a Chilean mm. wine. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. So they make different ones. They have uh, they have a Malbec. They have a Cabernet Sauvignon. I do believe they have a Pinot Noir. But the Cab Casiero del Diablo, Chilean. Casiero del Diablo. I will yeah. look it. Yeah, it's so smooth. It's so smooth. And I love reds. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, Juanes. No. Awesome. For me, I'll pass. I'm 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 a wine newbie. Only when my wife my wife is out drinking with like out. Okay. You know, I'm pretty agnostic. I'm like, whatever they have. Okay, white or red? The bubbles. White, red, you know, or bubbles? It, it, not bubbles. I'm not a fan of bubbles, but I, yeah, I, 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 I can like white or red depending on what I'm eating okay. and the experience. That's a very big, you're not that new. I just okay. kind of experience. I, I, I experience it with it, but I, I can't go and tell you names and types and regions and, gotcha. you know, I like That's it with totally cheese. Fine. I like, you know what I'm saying? I can't tell you that <laughs> I just like, I know the, the pairings because I go, some of these experiences, I'm like, oh, wine and cheese. I never thought about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Garber girls, your daughters? You talked about what they get from you. And I think you were saying earlier that they get their drive yeah. from you. Can you share a little bit more about, I guess, that exchange that you have with your daughters? Yeah, and I got to make sure I keep it, you know, short because I can talk about them all day. Uh, <laughs> what I will say, I did them in the, the journey in the beginning. So, and I was intentional about that. I wanted them to feel like this brand was theirs too because maybe one day you'll take it over. They told me absolutely not. They have no interest in wine, but I'm still working on that. So, I'm still working on it. Works with their 10 or 13, I, I mean, yeah. Do see, but I do see where they're intrigued by business. And my oldest one, she helped me name it. She's still looking for a payout. She made me sign a contract when she was like six, like, you, I helped you name this so you owe me money. And I was like, little girl, I gave you life. But they worked on my events. Like, I've had, <laughs> you better leave me alone. I've had them, like, check people in, for on my events. Like, I want them to see that, yes, I work a job, but I need this because it makes mommy happy. It brings mommy joy, rather. Mm. I'm free. I want my kids to know freedom. Mm -hmm. I Like, that's a big word for me. Like, I Freedom. want them to know who can literally create the life of your dreams. And so I, it is important that I don't shield them from my process. Like even today, right now, they know as mommy the podcast, I tell them what I'm doing, what it's about. They ask questions. Like I want them a part of the whole thing because I want them to have options. I saw one, like, go to school, be smart, go to school, be smart. You're smart. You're smart. Go to school. School wasn't, yes, I was great at school, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but School wasn't fun. I was just good at it. I don't want to preach that to my kids. I want them to have a life of freedom. Like, yeah, school is going to always be important. My kids are so bright. I'm so blessed. But I also want them to have full lives outside of that. What makes you happy? What brings you joy? What do you like doing? What makes you keep going in the morning? That's how you live a full life. So them seeing me have this passion and something that makes me so happy while still being their mom, while still working, while still having... A, a social life. Like I said, my friend circle, spending time with my friends is super duper important to me. Traveling is super important to me. They they think they have jobs, but they want to go on every trip, and I limit them to like, if I take three trips, they get to go on one. It's like, y'all don't contribute, so <laughs> you gotta relax. But they've also seen the world, too. <laughs> like, they gotta relax sometimes. You gotta relax. <laughs> but I it's like that. so normal to them because of what I've exposed them to. Mm -hmm. And I love that for them. We have conversations about politics and life, but I'm also remember their kids. I want them to feel like kids too. I don't want them to. I have a, my ten year old really quickly. She's already talking about saving for college and what college she's going to and all this. And I have to reel her in sometimes. Like, girl, can we just go to the pool? Let's just go have some fun. Because wow. I just remember that pressure, and I see me in my ten year old so bad that it scares me sometimes. Like mm. I'm proud of her, but I'm also like, you get to have fun, baby girl. You get to smile. You can make a mistake. She's the cry when she gets a B plus kid. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know where it came from. I'm lying. I know where it came from. But I'm working on it because I want them to be better than me. I want them to be free. I want them to make mistakes like other cultures get to do. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I want them to explore. I want them to be responsible. I want them to know who they are. 
And one thing my girls will tell you is they are black girls. Don't touch their hair. <laughs> Respect them at all times. Like, they are little forces, but they're fun and they're smart and they're silly. And I love when they remind me to not overthink and take mm. life too seriously. Like, I see where they see balance, where they value balance too. They're my little mirror sometimes. Mm. I don't know if you guys have kids, but that'd be scary when they... They are your mirrors. Like, do I really talk like that? Do I really Ooh. act like that? Like, wait a minute. Kids are your mirrors and they will reflect you. So I am blessed and privileged to have them because they show me my best and worst parts. They really give me so much grace. Lid, especially during this transition, my family dynamic has changed. And I have been doing my best. And the grace that they give me and the way they love on me and have loved on me through this transition and the way I've loved on them. Like, kids, they're my blessing. I can go on and on. I'm going to stop. They are my blessing. I love them girls. But I will end and say this. I don't necessarily subscribe to the notion that you have to live for your kids. You live for you first. If you live for everyone else, which is what was doing at first, you lose yourself. And then I'm no good to them. Then they're not seeing me be my full authentic self, which is not teaching them to be their full authentic self. So they'll joke and be like, mommy, you outside. You're right. I'm having a life. (laughs) I enjoy it. And you get to enjoy your life too. And then they be right outside with me. Don't let them fool you. But Mm -hmm. I see where they also recognize, oh, she's a whole person. And Mm -hmm. the reason she gets to be the fun, loving, stern, expected mom that I am is because I'm happy first. That makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, the mom I am now versus what I was before, I see the positive impact. Of course. Sure. I think that's beautiful. That is. Uh, that's so unique. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of us, we're not raised, right, with that in mind. It's like, you sacrifice yourself. I know my parents sacrificed themselves for me and everything else is for me. And I, it took me a while to realize that they were a full human being and not just my parents and to develop a relationship with them. Exactly. As we look to you for some nuggets, what kind of nuggets would you leave behind for someone that's watching this? So many nuggets. Um, so from the mom perspective, live for you first so that you can be the best parent you can be. The moment I made that decision, I felt more balanced. I felt more attentive to my kids. I felt Mm. our relationship grow stronger because it wasn't just about, I got to be a mom and sacrifice my happiness. There's always going to be sacrifice. I sacrifice for them little girls, especially when it comes to finances. But (laughs) I don't sacrifice my joy for them because I can't be a great parent. I can't be a great human being if I don't check in and have joy for myself. As a careerpreneur, give yourself grace. You may not always, always have the answer. Things may not always be perfect, but you are doing the work. Keep going and be kind to yourself in the process. Because chances are there's someone looking at you like you're doing it big while you're doing, you know, negative talk to yourself. Mm. Always talk to yourself kindly. And then I would say, just as an overall human being, be humble and kind. Those two things have gotten me very far. Being humble, remembering I don't have all the answers, and just being a nice person gets you far. And people think those cliches don't work. You catch more bees with honey, but this smile... (laughs) It's got to be places, but it's always genuine because I am a true believer that you get what you put out. And I will always choose to put out good energy, positivity, even when I don't feel it, even when I don't wear pants to a podcast. (laughs) I'm only feeling half up today. (laughs) (laughs) You know, only you know. I tried tried to sneak (laughs) it. I tried to sneak a, a, a sip of water and then you go ahead and say something like that. I'm over here choking now. I'm dying. <laughs> no, I probably guys. I will yeah. I almost did it. But you know this new virtual mm. world, you it's, only got to look put together. It's <laughs> the best. <laughs> so grateful that we were able to make this happen. I'm so grateful for you guys. It's the best. And we appreciate you, pajama mm-hmm. bottoms and all. So thank you <laughs> for just being present, thank you. as thank you said. You. I'll just say to you right now, I look forward to seeing you on Shark Tank. It's going to be the best episode. 
heard that. I think it's high. I feel like third time is like, is this the thing? You're like yeah. the third person that did that. Uh, and, 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 and I'm not just being nice. Yeah, well, from how you describe how the life that you want and the business that you have, you're definitely a good can a great mm -hmm. candidate, right? They're gonna love you because you know mm -hmm. they're Thank investors you. and they Thank and they're looking you. at yeah. the person, not just the business opportunity, but you have both. So I look forward to seeing you there. I but, appreciate that. Absolutely. But, but until there. then, please share where mm -hmm. people can find you <laughs> and follow you. Absolutely. So lovely wine everywhere. So lovely is spelled L O V E L E E. Both my kids' kid middle names are Lee. And so it's natural to spell the wine, the word lovely, L O V E L E E. And then wine. So lovelywine.com, at lovelywine on Instagram, at lovelywine on Facebook. I'm super responsive. Email me, Amira, at Lovely Wine. So go buy wine, please. Yes, <laughs> and keep on manifesting because yes. look at what it's brought you, you and that smile. So don't ever stop. We oh, are immensely you. proud of you. And Amira, thank you so much for joining us today, for sharing your time, I'm your energy, you that smile, and your <laughs> nuggets, of course. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Nugget, and we will see you on the next one.